All right, you guys, the review for the quadri quadratics quiz. So first of all, I need to graph the parabola x squared plus 2x minus 8. I know it's in what I call general form, and so then I know that a is 1, b is 2, and c is um, 1, or sorry, negative 8. So I'm going to use my equation, negative b over 2a, to find the line of symmetry. So b is negative 2, and a is 1, so negative 2 divided by 2 times 1 is negative 1. So I know that my line of symmetry is right there at negative 1. Somewhere along that line of symmetry is the vertex, so I plug negative 1 into my equation for x, and I evaluated it for x, and I got negative 9. So when I plugged it in, I got negative 9, so my vertex is at the point negative 1, negative 9. The y-intercept is pretty easy in this form because the y-intercept is simply that number right there is my y-intercept. That's my y-intercept at negative 8. So my y-intercept at 0, negative 8. Because I have a line of symmetry, I can reflect it. How do you get the x-intercepts? Well, I know that if I do my 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, that it would hit here at positive 2. And if I reflect it over, it hits also at negative 4. So those are my x-intercepts. Now it increases and decreases. So it's going uphill from negative 1 to infinity, increasing. It's going downhill, decreasing from negative infinity to positive 1. The domain, because as goes forever back and forth wide, it's always moving over. The domain's all real numbers. And the range is from 9, negative 9 up, or y is greater than equal to negative 9. Okay. Number two is actually pretty easy. First distance differences, I just do the y's only. The x's are not included in this, so it's just 18 minus 8, 8 minus 2, 2 minus 0, 0 minus 2, okay? And I get 10, 6, 2, negative 2. Now they're not the same. They are not the same, so I know it's not linear. But if I go second difference, I go 10 minus 6, and 6 minus 2, and 2 minus a minus 2, I get 4. 4 and uh, 4. So if the second differences are the same, then it's got to be a quadratic because second differences are the same. Okay, move it on to page 2. Go ahead and pause it anytime you guys want. So if I look at the graph, this one's actually pretty easy. X-intercepts are there and there at negative 1, 0 and at 3, 0. The y-intercept is right there at 0, 3. The line of symmetry has got to go right through the middle at x equals 1. The vertex is at the point 1, 4. Um, it concaves down because it goes down. That's what concavity means, okay? Number four. I know my zeros are at negative four. X equals negative four and X equals positive eight. It's the opposite, right? So there's negative four and there's positive eight, okay? Um, the line of symmetry has got to be right smack dab in the middle. So I know it's got to be at Two. You can do the average if you want to. The average would be just a negative 4 plus 8 divided by 2, which is a 4 over 2, which is 2. So the line of symmetry is in the middle at 2. But I want to know where on this is my vertex. I know somewhere. So I need an equation. Okay, so my equation is negative 1 for sure, x plus 4, x minus 8. Okay, and then what I need to do is plug in my 2. So I plugged in 2 for x, plugged in 2 here and here. 2 plus 4, 2 minus 8, so I get positive 36, which is the x or the y value of the vertex. So my vertex is at 2, 36. Now I need the y intercept, so I plugged 0 in for x, and so I get the y intercept, I got a y. Oh, I, actually, I was told the y intercept, so never mind, the y intercept was given to me right there. Okay, move it on. Turn the page, number 5 is very similar to number one. It's just another problem just like it. Um, I've got, it's in general form. There's A, B, C. So I used my negative B or 2A formula first. My negative 16 over 2 times negative 4, which is negative 16 over negative 8, which is 2. So I know the line of symmetry is at 2. Um, if I need its vertex, I plug the 2 in. I plug the 2 in for X, for both values. So I plug the 2 in for X. I use my calculator and I get 22. So the vertex is at 2, 22. Um, I know the y-intercept is at 6. So I have an answer here at 6. And I can fold that over, reflect it over, and have another 
um, value there, and so I know my parabola looks like this. Okay, six. My gravity, negative 16t squared. I've got my initial velocity for 24t plus 10, my starting height, okay? Again, if I want the very top, and you don't have to graph it, but it looks something like this. If I need the top, I need the vertex, so I have to use my negative b over 2a. Here's my a and my b. So at negative 24 over 2 times negative 16, 24 over 32, which is 0.75 seconds. That's the time to get there, okay? Throw it up in the air, 0.7 seconds is as high as. Then I want to know how high it is, so I plug that in for time. Plug it in here for t, plug it in here for t. I use my calculator and I get 19 feet, okay? That's all you need to do on six. Okay, on seven, I built my fence. Here's my barn. I got a thousand feet, so if I cut a piece, cut a piece, cut a piece, put a piece here, a piece here, a piece here. I cut those three pieces off my spool. I've got what's left goes here, which is a thousand feet minus my three X's, my three pieces. So my area is length times width, or X times 1,000 minus 3X. I distributed because I wanted to use my negative B over 2A, so I distributed me to 1,000X minus 3X squared. Okay, if I want the maximum, again, I am using my negative B over 2A, okay? Where A is, here's A, there's A is my negative 3, and here's B at 1,000. So I want my negative 1,000 over 2 times a negative 3, which is 1,000 over 6, which is 166.6 repeating for each of these sides, okay? Now, if that's the case, then if each of these sides are 166, that would leave 500 for the length, okay? You can plug that in here if you want to. 500 for the length, I plugged it in. You can, show my work. You can see my work for plugging it in for the length. I get 500. So the area then is length times width. So I multiply the length, which is 500 times the width, 166.6, and I get an area of 83,333.3. Domain. So domain, what's the thinnest these could be? Well, the smallest could be almost zero, right? That would make it a really small, small fence. But the biggest these could be is if you take all three pieces, all three pieces here. So you take 1,000 feet and put here, here, and here, or 1,000 feet divided by three, okay? If you did that, you wouldn't have much of a fence. Area, the smallest area, well, is zero. I mean, if you make it a fence that has zero area, but the biggest, we already know the biggest area we found was right here. So that's my range, 83,333. So if you have any questions, come and see me and ask, but um, that is the review.